Gamers Podcast. I was always very active, and I was, uh, I mean, years later, so, so when I became stuntman, so I'm jumping now, but I will go back, I promise. Yeah. So this is something that I, I kind of think uh, epitomizes me. So all the people that knew me when I grew up <coughs> um, liked me or didn't like me, didn't matter. But no one has ever been surprised by the fact I became a stuntman. Mm. Now, bearing in mind, becoming a stuntman back then wasn't really an accessible career. Um, yeah. You didn't know how to go about it. You didn't... It's not like now where everything's on the internet and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's everything's out there. Everything, whatever it is, everything's out there nowadays. It wasn't back then. Um, and the fact that I became a stuntman, you would think people would have gone, oh, wow. But no one, everyone was like, hey, that's it. And always, and I don't know why, because I don't really, I've never really considered myself to be a daredevil. Yeah. Uh, I still don't. I think the two are very different things. I'm a professional. I provide and create stunts for production. So it's not about what I want. I give them what they want what to they tell want, yeah. their story. Whereas daredevils, are, I kind of think um, it's a very insular thing. It's about themselves, about mm. trying to prove to themselves whatever it may be. It's not about doing it for someone else or doing it for themselves. It's like a jackass, jackass concept. They are dare, dare, daredevils. Well, I suppose they're doing it for money as well. Fair yeah, but, right. but they started it as a just like... Yeah, a bunch of lads doing stupid things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lads being lads. <laughs> <laughs> some of some of it's very funny. Yeah. Some of it I do go. Ooh. Oh. But but yeah. So um, so that side of it, it, it's it's always obviously been in me, uh, and it I didn't come across. I didn't discover it until a lot later mm -hmm. in my life. So to begin with, it was looking at. I always wanted to be in films. I see Clint Eastwood and the old Cowboys. My dad used to watch. He used to love all those. Hence, the Good, Bad, and the Ugly. Mm -hmm. Um, so I used to watch all those and. Uh, I guess that sort of inspired me into wanting to be films. Everyone wanted to be as cool as Clint Eastwood. I don't think, yeah. I don't think anyone's ever done it. Big, big question. So when, where did you find out about BSR? Was the BSR at the time? And um, how, that, how so did that So I happen? was working uh, in Jersey on mice. I did three seasons over there. And it would be like a summer season, so I'd be over there. And in my second season, I think it was... Um, Someone came over, got to know them, and they were training to get on the stunt register. That right. was my introduction to it. Up until then, I hadn't thought about being a stuntman because it's, why would you? It's not a really an accessible career. Right, and you were around 23? Uh, no, so when I went there, I would have been uh, about 24. 24. 23, 24, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When I met this chap, um, and that was when I started my... It was literally like it was an eye. I was like, I sort of laughed and went, yeah, right. And they went, no, no, it's just what I'm training for. That introduced me to it. So then I thought, yeah, I could, that's a bit of me. Uh, so I started training. I obviously, I was already quite physical. Mm -hmm, I'd already mm -hmm. done. My brother was a mountaineer and I'd done a lot of climbing through him. Yeah. Done martial arts. And so it then introduced me. So then it was a case of finding out what was required and, so I was, I was literally like, I was getting up in the mornings, I was cleaning the theatre where we did the show, mm -hmm. to get money. Mm -hmm. Then I'd go training, whether it be scuba diving, trampolining, fencing, mm -hmm. uh, three I was doing whilst I was there. Um, and then I would wash up in a bar up until I did the show and then I'd do the show at night, mm. in the evenings. So I had three jobs to pay for it all, but it was just every day was constantly, constantly, constantly. So that was it was. That's great that you were busy and. Yeah, you know. But this is why I kind of go like guys going, oh, it's so hard, it's so hard. Yeah, it's always been hard. Don't get me wrong, the standards mm. that they have set are incredibly high. Mm. Um, but it's always been difficult, and you've always had to be motivated, and funding it has always been the issue yeah, that yeah. it is finding out how do you how do you pay for all this? So yeah. literally, I had three jobs on the go to pay for it, mm. and, and washing it up. <laughs> Nothing glamorous, cleaning, washing up, and then doing the show. Yeah, um, but you do what you got to do to do what you part to of get paying, where you got to get to. Parts of pay, paying your dues, and then you can look back and say, "Yeah, I, I work work for it, and yeah. I got it." Normally, what happens when you join Stumpmaster, you get invited up to Equity, or what I don't know, like a now. meeting. Yeah, and you got for a meeting. Yeah, they can get that. I, mean, I, I, I didn't get invited up because Tim Johnson left, and someone else came in, and yeah. I never got. I just got a letter. Saying congratulations, you have been accepted on. The, so I had to submit everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, congratulations, you've been accepted on the stunt register. Uh, you, <laughs> and this is kind of hours. You're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to do that. You can't do this, and you can't work until such and such. Yeah. Okay. 
That's it. And, and that's it. You are now a professional stuntman. And I remember thinking, and, and it's kind of one of the things I've always had is you, you're now a professional stuntman. And I was like, well, I'm not being funny. I don't feel like a professional stuntman. <laughs> I feel like I'm a pretty accomplished all-round athlete Yeah. through obviously what we have to do. But actually doing our job of being a stuntman, no one's ever really spoken to me about that. Or, and I looked for places to learn it. Yeah, it just didn't exist. Um, and I've always thought that that was something that needed to be addressed. It, it's like, it was all about on-the-job training, mm. which uh, there is a, uh, has its merits, but also has huge holes. Mm. And I've always thought that with everything, and especially in this day and age, you know, there should be a way for kids learning to come up to learn what we need to do. So, so they're not. My first high fall was high fall was on camera. My first car knockdown was on camera. My first stair fall was on camera. It, it's with all the added pressure that that brings in yeah, itself. Yeah. It's like well, this. So, or you're off trying to work out how to do it yourself because no one's. Yeah. And then that was kind of how it always was. It's like no one told you how to do anything. Mm -hmm. You just had to work it out, and you go into work for these people, and, and you just trust that either they would help you or that you could. Yeah, well, now, sometimes they just say, well, you get on with it. You nowadays, know, well, it's much better. There are so many opportunities to yeah, learn these skills. And, and that's a good thing. Yeah. And it's because a lot of the skills are fantastic. And it, like I say, it was the same back then. You come in and it creates good ethic because mm. you can't help it by achieving that. It's, a, it's hard work. So you come in, um, but learning what we actually do it is more open now. And that's a good thing. And people are. Well, I hope they are more inclined to help, and there are more courses up and coming. And, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah, and and that that can only make for better performers. Yeah, because it, it's like because that's by my other bugbear really, especially uh, as a coordinator coming through, is stunt performer is not all about the stunt; it's about the performance, and mm. the performance has to be right and appropriate for the scene that you're mm. in. So, because it's not all about suddenly I'm on fire. You might have the whole scene before that where you stood <laughs> in a bar before someone chucks a Molotov cocktail through the yeah, window yeah. and you got to blend into that scene without standing out like a sore thumb where everyone's going, what's that clown yeah. doing there? <laughs> it looks like a right fish out of water. And so it's, it's it's getting people to understand that it's not all about macho bravado yeah. falling off the roof, like setting yourself on fire or having so a punch up. And it, lots of little things and a lot of them are that performance element, mm. the acting, the looking like you belong there. Yeah. Um, and when, so when you got on, like, as, f as far as I hear from, like, um, older generation stunt performers, stunt coordinators, that at the beginning, the, there was not much work going on. No, like, there wasn't. Do you remember your first five, <laughs> ten years, how it was, like, work-wise? I've always been, so to begin with, there was nothing. It's just I literally I got that letter. It's like you're a professional stuntman. But a professional no, stuntman. No work. You can't work until this particular date. They give you a date, so you yeah. get on, but you can't work till then. I've done, never quite understood that. Oh, okay. There you go. Um, so I'm not really on yet. What was it? Oh, that's interesting. And, and the whole list what, was of the, what was the reasoning? Why, the, why you're not allowed to work? Because uh, I don't know. Still <laughs> don't know. This year. I don't okay. know. I think it stopped another person taking work away. I guess okay. there, there wasn't much work, but it's not like now you've got all these live streaming channels, yeah, and yeah, totally so the, the well, not right now we don't. Um, <laughs> but the last however long the business has got busier and busier and busier, and that's yeah. that's great. However, back then it wasn't. You had like BBC One, ITV, Channel mm -hmm. BBC Two, Channel Four. Not, I don't think we had Channel Five back then. Uh, I'm not sure when that came in. Possibly, but you had a maximum of like five channels. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Do you remember your very first stunt job? I think my first one was on Judge Dredd, I think. Um, but it was, and that was probably 94. So no, I must have done a couple of little things before that. Yeah. Uh, but you were doing like, you do a couple of days a year if you were lucky yeah. to begin with. But I was one, that's so how I carried on doing what I was doing really. I was, uh, I was doing me and my girl at one point. When I got on, I was doing me and my girl, the musical. Oh, okay. Um, it's the name of the musical, Me and My Girl. Yeah, it's called Me and My Girl. Yeah. <laughs> so I was me doing, and My Girl with yeah, the yeah, musical. Yeah. So no, the musical was called Me and My Girl. I was, I was in that show. <laughs> so I kind of carried on doing like that. Like, stuff with and eventually work started to come in. Um, so I stopped doing Me and My Girl. I focused on the stunts and, and 
never looked back really. And every year, and then I'd work doing whatever, did gardening for a bit, and mm. you just did what you had to do to keep money coming in to pay the bills and and focus on, and making sure you were available to work when the opportunities came up. So when jobs did come in, um, you just had to be ready to take that opportunity and yeah. show what you could give. Because ultimately, there was when there's not enough work around, they go to people they know. I'm going to use you because I know you and I've used you. I'm not going to use him because I don't know what he can or can't do. And if he messes it up, it makes me look an idiot. So there's always been that uh, fear factor of getting in people that you don't know. Yeah. And there still is. The only difference now is there's more opportunities to prove yourself and show Mm. what you can and can't do. So that helps. But back Mm. then it literally was like you didn't get a job unless everybody else had turned it down Mm. or because they couldn't do it or someone's gone there. No, he's really good. Use them. Mm. Um, or you have like a specific, very specific looks or something like. Oh, no, no, that, that was less important back that then. Was, that was less important. Not back a thing, then. yeah. Like now, obviously, you have to, you've got this whole political correctness where you have to have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, women doubling women, men doubling men, black men doubling black men. And that's, that's all great. How, how often, how many times did you double a woman? I doubled a black pregnant lady on, on the show. Um, and I sat in makeup next to her. And I looked at her and she got my dress on. When was and that? she looked at me and I sat there and I went, Trust me, you look a lot better in this than I do. Um, because, again, not it, 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 it all sounds really bad, and it kind of is in an ideal world, but we don't work in the realms of mm. um, if things go wrong in what we do, people can get hurt. Yeah. So first and foremost, and this is the way I've always tried to work as a, as a coordinator when I'm bringing people in, got to be able to do the job. That's the most important thing. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I swear to God, I don't think it is, but in my head, it's always they must be able to do the job mm. first and foremost. And then you're looking for the most appropriate double for that. Because mm. that's the other thing we all know it is going in the right direction and fantastic. We need more and more performers. And I know people always look at me like, no, no, it's not enough work, it's not enough work. But you do because we need that diversity. Yeah. We don't have that diversity. And when you throw in specialist skills like riding a motorbike, riding a horse, things that, or scuba diving or whatever, but those are two, riding a bike and riding a horse are two that are quite commonly needed mm. and not enough people have those skills. So it's great. When you go, yeah, but we got... Let's plus again. Yeah, but they can only do one job at a time. Mm. So if they're not available, you then go, oh, where do I go next? And that's what's been hard. And that's improving, but we still need that diversity even more, even more, even more. And and right across the board, not just... I don't think yeah. We just need more and more diversity and more and more skill diversity. Because as you said before, driving skill is an expensive one to do. So it's not... So people that are struggling with finances... It's you're going to choose something that's less expensive mm-hmm. and less understandable. Yeah. But actually, in real world, getting you work and being good, I, I tell every manager, go and do it. Go and do the driving. If you can do that driving skill, do it because yeah. you'll earn that money back yeah, uh, yeah. down the line. Um, so I don't know where we started on this. Thing, so <laughs> don't worry about it. Like I'm going to go back to, uh, do you remember how many years being in the industry as a stunt performer um, you realize, okay, so now I can be a professional stunt performer only and I don't need to worry about other doing other jobs. It kind of, oh, yeah, I remember where we were now. So, okay, so I started working. Every year I got a little busier. Yeah. And then, like I say, you get an opportunity to do something. And I was quite lucky. There was a few films going and I started jobbing around on TV. And so TV doesn't employ you this. They've got something for you to do. Mm. So you don't get those big core teams where you sit around moving mats, cleaning mats and not actually doing much. So you get called because there's a job to do. Yeah. So I actually got to do some some good stunts and they were really varied and a, a real variety of stunts as well. So I was doing high falls, I was doing car crashes, mm-hmm. uh, I was doing fall, I did fall off a ship into the North Sea. Uh, so there was lots of different stuff that was challenging in its own way. And taking those opportunities, doing a good job, a stair fall. Um, I think my first stair fall was an oil rig at night with about 120-foot drop over the side in the North Sea. That was my first ever stair fall. Wow. Uh, and my motivational speech was, do me a favour, don't twist and go over the edge because it's a nightmare <laughs> filling out the paperwork when a stuntman dies. Oh, my God. <laughs> I've never quite forgotten that speech because wow. I was like, really? <laughs> 
the only concern they had was about the paperwork, <laughs> not about you. I don't, no, I, I, I don't know how much of that was bravado. How yeah. much of it was, you know, you, can't, you don't need it. So you when, don't need well, it. Do you remember when you, as I said... Um, when it, sorry, I don't know, kind of gradually. Gradually got busier and busier yeah. as years went by. <sighs> For a long time, I was always trying to supplement... So when, when you're not working, you're training or you're working, doing yeah, whatever. So stuff. I was doing door work. Uh, oh, you were a doorman? I did door work for a while. I was doing gardening. I was doing, you just did whatever you mm. could get. Anything that allowed you really... To be flexible as well. To be as flexible as possible. Yeah, so yeah. a job came in. I've never said no to a job. It was mm -hmm. like a job came in, you made it work. Somehow or other, you got out of whatever your yeah, other yeah, commitments yeah. were. So that that and that was always the hardest thing. It's like because you got to keep finances coming in on a regular basis. You got to keep training going, mm -hmm. um, and it, and you got to keep yourself available. So as the years went by, more and more work came in, but you'd still get huge times where there was yeah. nothing. And then I don't know. I suppose it really got. I, I, I couldn't tell you. It just, it went from being nothing to crazy. To, to just coming up, coming up and coming up and getting busy and busy and busy and busy. And then eventually, I, the way I looked at it every year was I doing better than the year before. Because mm. then I'm going in the right direction. And, then, and that's how it worked. For and me. then COVID happened. <laughs> and then, well, well, that was a bit later. That was um, very different. Once we got to COVID, there came a point, well, I suppose then it came a point when. But performing, and I started covering for people, coordinating on mm. jobs, um, or I start helping them out on jobs, and then they put me in to cover for them, and, and then uh, so I started doing that, and then you get calls to come out, and so the coordinating started to happen, mm. um, and then that, and so it was all performing and local, and then that started to happen. Yeah, whereas yeah. now I'm like that, so it's nearly all coordinating now. Very few people phone me. To, perform anymore which is a shame it does happen now and again mm. I've had the other like Enola Holmes with Jimmy oh, I, was so, I was just about to say like it was so lucky so me and Tony we worked on that Enola Holmes too and Tony was playing this amazing character <laughs> just like it was literally written for you that was good fun you, you know when Quentin Tarantino he says he writes for like uh, Samuel Lee Jackson parts and stuff I think whoever <laughs> was uh, writing uh, Enola Holmes too he wrote that or she wrote this uh, character for you you were this uh, uh uh, prison guard, like Sir, the boss. Policeman, Sergeant Beeston. You, Sergeant, Sergeant Beeston. Beeston. But it was very interesting because I was playing character who is the prison guard, right? Yeah, that's right. So how did uh, I am a, pr a prison guard, but I'm not a policeman, but you are the uh, the, the the boss of the policeman, and how did we work? To it's so weird because I didn't write the script. <laughs> Because <laughs> it started. With I don't know if you know how this works. Yeah. I was doing Matilda. I was stunk all night on Matilda. Oh, Matilda, the big stunts. Yeah, yeah, they're like massive, <laughs> huge. But do you know what? It, it was, it was, um, it was a fun job to do, but it was also quite hard. And at the end of it, I wanted a break. Yeah. And I bumped into Jimmy at Shepton. Yeah. And uh, he just said to me, he said, do you, do you fancy playing a part? Because he knows I come from a performance background anyway. So I was like, yeah. yeah. He, first of all, he asked me when I finished, and he said, yeah. do you want to play? But I said, yeah, yeah. He said, but you got to audition for it. Yeah, well, fine, okay. I didn't really care if I got it or not. So anyway, I went and did the audition. Long and short of it is he said, yeah, 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 we'll, we'll have you. Um, what was the audition? Did you have to have lions, right? Oh, I don't know, that's to... fine. No, it was all improvised. Something so, shouting. <laughs> we got there. Chasing someone. No, he, he wanted, he said, oh, it's just, oh, can you fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, um, can you do any sword work? I said, yeah, yeah, I'll do sword work. Um, I like to think I'm okay at that. Yeah. <laughs> so he said, do you mind if we just improvise? He said, just come towards me, throw a few punches. And uh, he said, I want you to intimidate me. I want you to scare me. I was like, all right. <laughs> so that little devil in your ear where you're going. You've got to remember, I didn't care if I got this job. I, yeah. I, I, what, I just wanted a rest. I was tired. <laughs> so I've, I've come in and thrown a jab and a hook and, and I'm throwing a few punches. And then I just looked at him and his mobile phone filmed him like that. He's looking for the phone. Like, I've just gone, oh, fuck it. <laughs> so I kicked the phone out of his hand. I scared the shit out of him. <laughs> so he's jumped. And he definitely loved it. Uh, so he's jumped. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so I did, I did what he asked me to do. I scared him. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, that all ended all good, blah, 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 blah. Next thing I am into Jimmy Dees, Jimmy O'Dees came up and he said, Tony said, I've got to ask you a question. I said, what's that? He went, did you really kick the phone out of his hand? <laughs> I went, 
Yeah, Jimmy, I did. <laughs> he went, he will not shut up about you. He absolutely loved it. He got the job. I was like, so it all worked out well in the end. It was, like I say, I think had I been desperate for the job, probably wouldn't have done it. Wouldn't yeah. have dreamt of doing it. But I was just like, oh, fuck it. You want me to scare you? I'll scare you. Was it the director who um, you kicked out the yeah. Uh, yeah. The director was really interesting. What was his name? Do you remember? Harry. Harry. Uh, uh, I remember because uh, my bit as well. So they asked me to do a little bit of acting. And my acting was like, I'm just at the, pris- uh, at the prison. And uh, waiting when the, all these women come out. So it's a, a Victorian times uh, women prison, basically. And as they walk out, the uh, director says, like, Renars, what I want from you is just show me, like, a really creepy face. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like... That's your normal <laughs> face! <laughs> and I was like, like this? That works. <laughs> and then also, I didn't know who's uh, the actress who's going to be playing in all home. So, like, I didn't see the first one. And, like, oh, the uh, actress is going to be coming over. And she's like, and then I turn around, and it's Millie Bobby Brown. And I was a huge fan of the uh, the Stranger Things. And I was yeah, like, yeah. oh. And I did the creepy face for her. And she's like, yeah, that looks pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so there's literally a scene where I'm just standing there, and they're coming out with me and my creepy face. But, yeah, the director was really cool. So we had a, we had a scene with her. Uh, well, I've climbed up, chasing up a drain pipe yeah. right at the beginning of the film. And I got fall, she kicks me in, and the drain pipe falls back, and I fall off the drain pipe. So that was really funny. So the first time we rehearsed it, <laughs> so she kicks me in the head. And she's like, oh, I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry. She kicked me in the head every single time. She only punched us the first time. And it was like, because I was like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. She was just like, oh, right, fine, bang. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's all right. <laughs> Thanks, Billy. <laughs> oh, God. But I, I, I mean, I really enjoyed working with you on that when it was such a, uh, with Shane as well, like such a really cool yeah, team. Yeah, no, and... it was, it, it was one of my favorite jobs of the yeah. year because it was just, for awesome. me, it was no stress. It was just, an opportunity to go back to doing what I got into the business for, performing and just yeah. doing stunts, acting, uh, and none of the responsibility of, of yeah. what you have as a coordinator or I remember you kept, you kept and, saying that. <laughs> you just kept saying, you're like, I'm just chilling. And Jimmy OD, like, shout out to Jimmy. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, amazing, great. Amazing really easy to work with. Such um, a cool dude. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. One thing what I really remember was, like, I thought you said, like, you haven't performed about 10 years or something like that. I haven't. Um, not to that degree. Not to no, that degree. I, I might do the old day even yeah. there on something. And then but... all of a sudden, this one, I remember we did the, uh, from Explosion, we do the jerk backs. And you had your handcuffs behind your back. And you yeah. said, no, I need to keep my hands like this. And then the first jerk, but like you landed on your arm yeah. pr- pretty bad. Well, yeah, I basically ended up my elbow going in the side. And it was, yeah. Because trying to keep it there yeah, as long yeah. as possible, as long as possible. So it looks like I'm still handcuffed. Because initially I was like, oh, I'll just do it. And I thought, I'm just going to dislocate my shoulder. <laughs> it's, it's just no way that wasn't going to happen. So I was like, all right, let me just hold the cuffs. Yeah. So uh, as I come out and try, um, unfortunately, I left it a bit late to bring my arm out. So as I came round on it, my elbow just got pushed in, oh. ribs here, and yeah, that kind of hurt. A and then the next day, you got punched in the face. I, I had a tough couple of days. <laughs> and then punched in the face. So, <laughs> so he's bleeding the actress, now. <laughs> literally, and you, do you know when you, you get punched, it's like you get punched in the face, you get punched in the yeah, face, yeah. it's all part of it. She hit nothing but my nose. <laughs> literally, big right hook, bang, on the nose, boff. Gone down, blood everywhere. And it was fine. But what made me laugh? <laughs> and it didn't make me. Because I was like, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah. It's just but the actress, she was fine. so... She spent the day moaning about how her hand was hurting. All right. Um, and she was lovely. She was really... But she, she did make me funny because she literally got around my head. Up. That's so and funny. Like, oh, and then yeah. day after, I got, got stung, stung by the bloody wasp, wasp. inside my helmet. Uh, back of my, I was like, <laughs> and it was just what like, have I done? <laughs> I was like, I was thinking like, what's, yeah. Right, but it was still my favourite job because it was like, yeah. That was so much fun. Um, they did put our, um, uh, that chase scene for a Taurus Award. Yes, I yes, I don't yes. think we won it, but <laughs> but that chasing scene was really cool. Like, they also the way it was filmed, it was very, very cool. Yeah, like, it was good fun. It was good fun. Yeah. It was good fun. It was all, uh, like I say, I really enjoyed that because it was just, getting hurt, it's getting, mm. that's part of the game. I don't mind that. It, it's just, it's, just that opportunity to just perform and have fun and be with not, uh, like, like-minded people. And yeah. and for me, it's nice. I enjoyed doing that and working with other stunt performers and, and up-and-coming performers because as a performer, they talk to you like a performer. Mm, yeah. Sometimes they come in to work with you as a coordinator. You, you, they don't open up as much right, as you. Right. It's nice to see what they're like 
when you're in a rehearsal yeah, room yeah. and how they are and how they perform. So for me, it's good to see how people are because I'm going to want to use people down the line yeah, on yeah. other jobs. So it's it's good to see that. And oh. I, and I've always been. I like team players. I don't like people that are just out to make themselves look great. Yeah. And make a cup of tea for you when when you come in, but don't do anything when you're not. It's yeah. like I'm not into all that. I make my own tea. I'm not fussed about that. I, mean, it's, I want you to be a part of a team, and I want I like to work with people that you can rely on mm, mm, mm. on those other occasions. That if shit is fan, you want to know they're exactly. there for you. They're not yeah. looking around to see if someone important's about to impress. So right. it's all about a team ethic. I probably like this, I've always said it to you. You know I have. It's like no one works for me. You work with me. Mm, it's mm. a team. We do this together. Get the best. Hundred percent. And, and I think the industry's going more that way now. So yeah. which is, which is, can only be a good thing. Yeah, it's it's a, a great work ethic, and hundred percent, I agree. And I I remember how we met for the first time. The first time we met on that TV series, Hari Jiri Hari. Oh, Jiri, Giri Haji. Giri Haji, yeah. I enjoyed that show. That yeah, good. that was fun, and I remember it was so funny because we had the staircase uh, shootout, and we running stun guys running one by one up, like all of us together, and get killed one by one. And uh, that was the single shot moment, wasn't it? When you're yeah. climbing through the windows, and we had a big gun battle through the warehouse, and then uh, ended up with um, uh, Al Holland getting kicked out the window. Um, was that that one? Oh, you, I know you might have been in a bit we, before that. We were in the restaurant, the Russian area. guys, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I know, yeah, but they came in the back doors up. Oh, well, that was um, that was prior to the, yeah, to yeah, the bit yeah. I was just saying, yeah, yeah, no, that was it was all part of the same sequence, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that was good fun. It, then from that, it went into this. They had the big gun battle in the restaurant, and that, and they end up legging it and chasing yeah, yeah, after yeah. them. And then they chased them across the roof. And then this moment came as they you cut them climbing in a window. So you got all these guys yeah, yeah. climbing in the window, and our lead actor climbing in. And we did this whole sequence as a single, single shot. So I remember when we rehearsed it. Obviously, these are the moments where you're like. You've got to choreograph it. You've got to choreograph camera. You've got to choreograph everything. Uh, so it was a great opportunity for me to literally create and direct a, mm. nice, a nice sequence. And it was, it was. Um, oh, you yeah, were no, stunt coordinator, or you were second unit director? I was stunt coordinator, but like I say, people go, "Do you direct? Do you direct all the time?" Yeah. Oh, I, I do, and I, um, because I don't see them as mutually exclusive. Yeah. Um, and that sequence, where it's a single shot, you have no choice unless someone's standing there saying, oh, I, I, "To direct the whole thing," because that, well, yeah, or yeah. we sit here and don't do anything <laughs> because no, I've got 100%. to direct the action, but I've got to direct where the camera goes because I've got to choreograph the action to work for the camera as the camera goes through the sequence. Um, so yeah, no, it was good fun. It was good fun, and one of the reasons why I remember it very well is because on that staircase, I remember upstairs it was uh, uh, Neil Chapelov. And uh, he still, f for whatever reason, he still refers to me as Ray, not Renars. Because when I moved to... But you got your own back. You called him Neil Chapelhoff <laughs> instead of Chapel House. So there hey, you go. Hey, <laughs> I got him back. Did you... Where's your sound effect, <laughs> eh? Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> but anyways, so... Because I could hear upstairs, you were saying, who is downstairs there? And uh, Neil was like, oh, it's Ray. And you were like, who the fuck is Ray? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, he's like, oh, it's Renard. So why don't you say his name? Because <laughs> I remember when I used to go to East London gymnastics. For some reason, I, I I remember like British British people struggled to say my name. So I was like, just call me Ray. Just makes it easier. Uh, you know? Okay, so that's how it works. Because Renard's is so hard. To <laughs> yeah, say. it's so hard to say. Well, Brits <laughs> lived in Canada. I remember no, never had a problem. They were like, oh, it's exotic, cool name, Renard. <laughs> Moved to UK. What? <laughs> What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're now right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, and so from most of the kind of most memorable stuff, I remember uh, I was uh, asking you about the um, uh, the gladiator. There's this uh, very uh, special scene I will put here, that scene where you guys are uh, practicing with that uh, young uh, prince in the woods and one of those topless men, that's, uh, that's you, one of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that just, I still look like it. Well, hundred percent. Um, <laughs> and with Joaquin Phoenix, because because I yeah with Joaquin yeah. Phoenix, because I think like that is a very memorable for me because I really love Gladiator and stuff. But what about you? Are like one of the most mer memorable things you've done? Well, that's the, you know, I mean, Gladiator was a fantastic film. And it was a fantastic one to be part of. Mm. Um, so that, and that was uh we we that came a bit later on. So we had all the battle sequence in the opening of Gladiator. We we had filmed that first. Um, and that was a lot of fun. Mm. The um, 
the woods on fire and I was the guy running down on f- the hill on fire who then got harpooned really? back flying through the air. And crazy, crazy thing about that location when you guys filmed it, 20 years later, we did... Uh, oh, they still use it. We did Napoleon there. Yeah. With Ridley Scott and with Working Phoenix, well, twenty this, years later, with Working Phoenix, okay, yeah, 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 that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, but they use like, once it, once they know a location works, yeah, yeah. it goes on a list and they go back. Yeah, I yeah. think that was the first time that I'm aware of it was used. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously, with the scale of the film of Gladiator, so it worked for all the facilities and for everything. Do you remember so. the name of that area? What is, what is yeah, it? Yeah, it's up. Uh, um, t- it's near Tilford. It's not far from where I live, so that's why I loved it as well. Tilford. Tilford, it's in yeah. the woods near Tilford, and that's yeah. where the ar- it's army training. French and my well, you know when we did in Lola Homes too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, close, it's close always by. similar local. That was near Elstead. Yeah, um, but uh, this was near Tilford, which is because it was funny when we did in Lola Homes in the woods, and all these wandering army people were because they yeah. had an orientation there that's or something. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just walking with a compass, and they're like, I don't know where I am. <laughs> And we're just chilling in a bush and there's just like someone just passes by with a full gear like... Oh, Dressed up as a Victorian yeah. policeman. <laughs> yeah, and we were like, that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so most memorable stuff. What else you can tell? Saving Private Ryan obviously was was great fun. Do you remember which scenes specifically? Well, I would, I got a friend who worked on the Dominic Irish stunt guy who, I don't know if he still does, but he used to do quizzes. Oh, right. And apparently I was in his quiz. Oh, okay. And no one ever got the answer. Who was Private... Who else played Private Ryan? So yeah, I did. So the dead Private Ryan in the sea and the wash of the sea, came yeah. over, that was me. <laughs> so, so. What do you mean dead Private Ryan? So they came across and they're looking for bodies on the beach oh. and uh, they come up, he's got Ryan on the back on his backpack oh, and gotcha. it's one of the brothers that they'd found oh, dead. The one of the brothers was there. Uh, that, that was me. Um, oh, cool. But we did all the stuff in Wexford with the beach landings. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, the, the, I mean, there was a, a scene within Private Ryan which uh, I've never forgotten. It was uh, a jeep towing trailer. It was a, it was a horrible sequence to do. Uh, but it's just doing your job. I've always been one. It's like you sign it on the dotted line. The clues mm-hmm. in the name. You can't pick and choose. You do what you do. Um, so I got put into double the actor for this scene. Along with, there was four of us in a trailer uh, and four in the Jeep, but the trailer was where you really didn't want to be. And, mm. and, and it was, yeah. the trailer was just doing whatever it wanted to do, whenever it wanted to do it. Yeah. And the idea was that we'd sit in it, it's been driven through and it would slide into a crater. We'd all come piling out into this crater and then it would continue on and go into another Did one. that scene made, made the cut? No, it's not even in the film. It it's cut. also not even in the making of it. I've got a couple of pictures at home that um, were taken... Uh, that's on the day, but it, it's yeah. No, he nearly killed us all. It was it's the only job I've ever done where you literally gone. If we come out of this alive, we've done well and actually meant it. Um, um, and it, this, yeah, and this is one of the craziest thing about stunt industry is like what you know people who watch uh, movies at the end they they have no idea that there's so many things being cut out. There's so many things what we been working our asses off or our asses being on the line and stuff, and they just cut it out. I thought I broke my back on that job. Like <sighs> I. I there was a couple of guys that got Sean got his face smashed up. Mm. Uh, a guy nearly caved his chest in. When I landed on take two, on take two, the trailer sort of started to go. So we started to come out. It then came back down and then went. Uh, and so, uh, what happened to me? I can only give my perspective. As I've started to go, as it's going, it's then come back down. It's caught my ankles. Yeah. And spun me, and I ended up landed on the back of my neck. This is how I remember. Yeah, it. yeah. I landed on the back of my neck. Huge crack. Vision went, left side went completely numb. Oof. And I just thought, that's me done. It was quite, it's quite bizarre. You know, those sort of moments, they're kind of, you don't ever know how you're going to behave in those situations. But yeah. I just was kind of resigned to the fact that you know, there was no panic. It was just resignation. That I've done my, done my back, done my neck, done something. Something, <laughs> something ain't good in it. Mm. <laughs> uh, so I thought that was me fucked. But then I started to get spotty vision as my vision came back and pins and needles were down my left side as, as the feeling came back. And this all probably happened in a very short space of time, but it all happened very slowly in your head. Mm. And this is like one of the, your first like big injuries? Uh, yeah, I've uh, put them in all the... It's not... No, I've had... I've, I've, I'll tell you some others. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that also, like, how many years you've been doing uh, being stunty? Well, when was Private Ryan made... I can, I can look it up. Your memory's going to be better than mine. I can look it up. We always can cut out these little, little moments. 2000 something, I imagine. 
what do you, uh, you guess? Two thousand and something. Two thousand and two thousand and two. Say. Let's see, Private Ryan. After Gladiator, I think. So yeah. Private Ryan ninety eight. Ninety eight, yeah. Yeah. Be. And you said two thousand something. So that was its release date. So it's probably made in ninety seven. Yeah. Yeah. Most likely. So so yeah so this was still quite early on in my career really to where we are now. Mm. Um, so this is twenty five years ago. Yeah. So things are a bit different ago. now. I don't think, if I'm honest, you'd be allowed to do that stunt as it was done then. Oh yeah. Uh, it was too. The, the thing that made it um, dangerous was the unpredictability of it all. Mm. It, it, you just literally had to sit there and ride it and be ready. Because normally out. they would rehearse with dummies. They would rehearse with some kind of weights or something. Oh, yeah, no, we they did, would, right? There was a rehearsal with sandbags in this train. And ah. sandbags got destroyed? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we were all watching as this trailer went along the back of the field. And then all of a sudden the trailer went, oh, bang, and landed on top of all the sandbags. <laughs> and we were looking, I remember Franklin pissing himself laughing. And you were like, yeah, okay, no, let's put people in there. <laughs> and let's we were, put people in. We literally were looking at it going, they're going to can it. They're not going to do it. It's just too dangerous. <laughs> we're gonna do it. And the next thing we know, we were like, okay, boys, mount up. Well, fucking here we go. Wow. So we, did, did at least you guys get a proper adjustment or not really? <laughs> let's not talk about that. So um, <laughs> Terry got, he got an adjustment. Would yeah. I say, no. <laughs> so we got in. Because that's, that's what you signed up for. Yeah. Going. And in my head, you know, I was still trying to, I was keen, I was keen to make a name for myself that, you know, I'll take the offer this room, but it's like, I'm not just out for the glory job. I'll do whatever comes my way. You yeah. Know? It, was, it was my opportunity, I hoped, to make some sort of impression that, you know, I was worth employing. Yeah, yeah. So um, I did that. Got in there, we had take one, take one, um, Take one guy smashed himself up. He hit because this this crater went round like that, and there was a clay buttress there. So the idea was, is it would slide in, it would start to tip, we get out, it would hit that bus clay bit, solid bit that was left, and it would whip the trailer and spin it. And so you had to make sure you were clear before that. Happened. Jeez. That was the idea. And guy, you mean guy list? Yeah, it was guy list. Yeah, yeah. yeah another so, stunt, stunt uh, he he was the guy, he was the chap that introduced me to stunts in the first place. So really? I'd known him a long time. Shout out to Guy List. Shout out. So anyway, so he'd come out and hit that buttress chest first. And, and the day before, <laughs> in rehearsals, we'd already had an accident and he'd, I'd taken him up to the hospital the day before where he'd come out and knocked himself unconscious. So it, this was clearly a, a sequence that was not boding well for anyone. Jeez. So anyway, he'd hit, I, I landed, missed the crater completely, landed, bounced along the ground, uh, and everyone was... Find Tom Struthers. The four of us that were in there was Tom Struthers, Sean Rogers, myself, and Guy List. Mm -hmm. And it was not the place you wanted to be. Uh -oh. um, so shout out to all them, whether they like me or don't like me, respect to them for being in that trailer. Shout out. <laughs> trailer guys. Yeah. Trailer boys. Because <laughs> they know, they genuinely know that was not a nice place to be. Wow. And they got in. So that happened the first time. And now by the end of this, guys had to go into the ambulance to see the medic because he can't now stand up. He's literally doubled over like an old man. And for, you know, the guys that know Guy, he's, he's a lump. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. jacked. And to be fair, I remember he got told that the only reason he's probably still in one piece is because of that muscular held the muscles. stature that held him in one piece. Oh, wow. But anyway, so he was in the nurse, he was massaging him and doing what she needed to do to get him back in for take two. Jeez. Which we, which we did. So we all got back in for take two. So anyway, got in for take two. Take two was the one that did the double take. Started to go, came down and then went again. And it caught me out. Sean landed head first in the crater next to the camera, literally. That's the camera, that's his head. So if he'd been a little bit further over and hit the camera, I think he probably wouldn't be with us anymore. But um, did, was he, he was literally it? eating through a straw after that. Jeez. He smashed his face up. Good and proper. The oh, only well. thing holding his teeth in, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Sean, the only thing holding his teeth in was the swelling. So he was pretty smashed up. And I, Sha did Sean continue stunts? He went, yeah, yeah. Well, he, he uh, obviously had to go off to hospital. Uh, he came back the next day, had to come back the next day, I believe he was told to come back the next day. 
but he literally was face out here and he literally had to eat through a straw. Um, and I believe he still has problems with it. I haven't spoken to Sean for a long time, but I believe he still has dental problems now. Is uh, he coordinating? I would imagine so, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, it, it wasn't, and that was right. So you had that, you had guy, and then mine felt very like a personal thing. That, but ultimately, so I I had that issue because when I did that, all like I said, it all happened very fast. Yeah, yeah. And at the end of that season, as uh, the spotty vision came back and the pins and needles, so the feeling started to come. I think I, obviously I'd done some damage, but young as you, I just remember looking back in the crater as once I could see, and there was a body in the crater. And I didn't know who it was. My first thought was if that's guy i don't think he'd survive another hit mm. so i've gone running over or i've gone over there um and sean was it was sean who smashed up so anyway we've got the paramedics in and carried on and then ultimately a, top, a while later i ended up collapsing in the shower not that day but later on mm. i started getting sciatic because the pain got worse and worse so my injury manifested later on uh and i collapsed in the shower i couldn't get off the floor i, I was I couldn't use my legs, or I could, I could commando crawl. That's what I could do. But I was in <laughs> so much pain. But ultimately, my my uh, commando is naked, or commando is uh, well. I was naked at the time because I was in the shower, <laughs> so no one wants to see that. So, like, um, <laughs> no one wants to see that commando crawl. So oh. the, <laughs> ultimately, my my uh, disc had exploded. You know, that's, that's what the surgeon said to me when I saw him. Um, said your disc has exploded into bits and there's bits of sausage meat all over i've got to go and clean it up and then we'll try and put you back together and wow. see what we can do and they gave me options and i told them what i wanted i wanted them to do the least obtrusive way and then if that didn't work i said well obviously i'm going to be asleep yeah um so I expect you to make a decision in there and I give you authority to do that. What I'd like to do is try and put back whatever's left if there's enough. Mm. Um, we'll see how we go with that. If not, the next option was to put a fake disc in. Uh, and they, they said that might, your body might reject that. Uh, but that would be the next one. And the third option would be to fuse the bones together. And I really didn't want to do that because that's then going to lead to less mobility. Yeah, the fusion. And yeah, so I tried to avoid that. And ultimately, I did avoid that. They put back what I had there. I think I've got about a third of a disc there mm. uh, that still, was still usable. So I still have issues with it. Um, but touch wood, all these years later, I'm still, yeah. I'm still doing what I do. Uh, and I remember... <laughs> This is how stupid we are sometimes. Mm. So I think two weeks after I got off the operating table, I was on the bill, coordinating the bill, doing a, uh, a fight sequence and rehearsals. You know what I'm like? I'm very hands-on. Yeah. Yeah, that's never changed. <laughs> I've always been like that. And even after getting off the operating table for two weeks, like when I was supposed to not do anything for six weeks at all, yeah. two weeks I was throwing myself around doing it. Stupid, stupid. Uh, but I did it. And, uh, and then... Probably well, six to eight weeks after the operation, Jamie Edgell phoned me up and said, Tony, do you fancy doing a stair fall? And I went, yep. <laughs> no thought. No. Yep. Because <laughs> my missus, my missus, she is still. Um, Christ, we've been together a long time. She was like, you can't, no more car knockdown stair falls. You know, the hard knock and stuff. you got, yeah. you know, your body's <laughs> so that's, anyway. that's the one where I kind of want to lead to a further conversation about that feeling of you know you have a missus you have your at the time was she your wife or you were just no we, we, we're still not married are you still not married no, but, no, you no. know you have someone who cares about you and also your family obviously and then things would change drastically are we talking about someone else when you, no <laughs> <laughs> sounds like it when ch ch things would change drastically when you have kids and all that stuff when was like the point where like okay I should just calm down I should just like really hasn't just, happened it never happened no and this was the point so that was a conversation that sort of happened where it's like, we can't, you can't, you know, this is, you're, you, you, know, you literally almost paralyze yourself. Yeah. I thought I was paralyzed to begin with. Um, so the hard knock stuff, stair falls, car knockdowns, all those sort of things that, you, you know, that, that you're taking a pound yeah, yeah. in, you know, you shouldn't, you can't do that anymore. So when Jamie phoned me up, it literally took me a split second to go, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. And I went down, I didn't tell her. I went down to Cornwall, it was on Dot Mine. Did Stairfall, fine. Um, came home, and I told her afterwards that I'd done it. <laughs> to which her reply was, I'm not fucking pushing you around in a fucking wheelchair. 
I don't think she's very pleased about it. <laughs> so, but my reply was, I just went, you know what? I have to be who I am. This yeah. isn't a job. And this is what people don't understand. And I get irritated when people come into it and all they care about is the money. And it, it's not, it's a fucking passion for what we mm. do. I love what we do. I love performing and I love, I love the, the stunt side of it. And I can't, to give him that up, I just said, I'll just turn into a miserable old man mm. and I might as well be fucking dead. Mm. So I can't change who I am. It's not getting up and going to my job. This is what I am, mm. which is why I say I get itchy feet because I, I, lo I love being at work. I love doing what we do. So yeah. so very quickly I realised that that wasn't going to stop me from doing things. And um, do I have issues with it sometimes? Yeah, of course I do. And I, I say I've got calcified vertebrae at the top from years of mm. taking knocks. But um, they don't want to operate on that unless they really have to. Because <laughs> it's worse to operate at the top. There's even less room at the top to operate than there is at the bottom, and there always has a risk. So mm. uh, if I can keep the, – the more in shape I am, the better it is. But if I get any inflammation in my neck, I might so, uh, What do you do for training now? Uh, it's more just about trying to – well, it depends how busy I am. You know, yeah. it's like if I'm busy with work, you travelling, you don't get any time, I don't do anywhere near enough. Um, so I just try and do a bit of weights and a bit of stretching and – it, it's more about maintenance of health yeah. than... Sw swimming should be very good for you. Yeah, but it's... Um, it's boring. <laughs> it's never been my favourite yeah. exercise. Uh, my son loves it. I don't mind going to the pool, but I'm not... I'd like say it's not my go-to. Yeah. I'd Just rather... throwing yourself around. That's your go-to. Yeah. Okay, let's you, have, let's you have another little... Set. You know what I'm like. <laughs> I know. And I'm the first to demonstrate if someone's not happy to... <laughs> Do it. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Bruno's Podcast.